In previous lessons, we've become quite good at learning how to use naming and how to find different formulas, but we've been mostly been dealing with metals combined with non-metals. Now, we are going to move on to a different type of naming, and that is when you have two non-metals. So remember, the non-metals are all of these on the right-hand side of the steps. It's all of these, and it's also hydrogen. Okay, so they have their own way of being named, which is different to when you have metals and non-metals. Okay, so they tell us, well, we're going to do a first example. So here they're going to give you um, this over here, okay? So it says, step one, write down the name of the first element. So the first element is this one over here, which is carbon, okay? So we're going to say carbon. Then it says, write the IDE name of the second element. So the second element here is oxygen, but the IDE of that is oxide. Okay, there we have it. Then it says, use the prefixes. Okay, so how many carbons are there? There is one carbon. So what does one mean? Mono. So you would put mono in the front. However, there is a rule. Don't use mono on the first element. Okay, so fine, we won't use that then. Then we go to the second one. How many oxygens were there? There were two. So we go to two on the table, and what does it say? Di. So you add the word di in the front. And so this is carbon dioxide. And so for the rest of this lesson, we're just going to do a lot of these examples. So here's the next one. It's going to be N2 O3. So the step one says write down the name of the first element, that is nitrogen. Step two, write down the IDE of the second element, so that's oxide. It is oxygen, but we use the IDE name. And now we use the prefixes. So if we look at nitrogen, how many nitrogens were there? There were two, so we say di, okay? And then if we look at oxide, there were three of them, so that's tri. And so there's the name, dinitrogen trioxide. Okay, we will also look at some of these weird things as we go along, but let's go to our next example. So our next example is going to be CF4. Okay, so you see how when we have two non-metals, which are any two on this side or also with hydrogen, then we have to use these prefixes. When we looked at other lessons where we had metals and non-metals, we did not use these prefixes. Okay, so step one, write down the name of the first element, that's carbon. Step two, write the IDE of the second element. So that's fluorine, but we're rather going to say fluoride, okay? So that'll be U-O-R-I-D-E, okay? Now, uh, we, used to, we need to use the prefixes. So carbon, there was only one of them, so one, but you're not going to put a mono in the front. It is correct, but you won't. It, it, it's technically... I don't blame you, what I mean is, like if you wanted to do that, I don't blame you, but there is a rule that says don't use mono on the first element. Now for fluoride, that one was a four. So four means tetra. So we need a bit more space here, and we're gonna say tetra fluoride. So this is carbon tetrafluoride. Our next example is going to be P4O10. Now, I'm not sure how far your teacher wants to take this. Some teachers only stop there. Some teachers might go all the way. But let's just try this one. So step one says write down the name of the first element. Well, that's phosphorus, okay? You do need to know that. That's phosphorus, which we can see over there. See how it's a non-metal and a non-metal. And then oxygen is just going to be oxide if we do the IDE name. Okay, um, so just once again, remember in the previous lessons, we always did something on this side and something on this side. Now we're doing both of them on this side. Now for the prefixes, if we look at the first one, phosphorus, it's four, so that's tetra. So we're going to say tetra like that. And then for this one, it's going to be deca. Okay, so then you're going to have uh, deca oxide. But now here we have a little weird thing. Deca oxide sounds weird. Deca oxide. Here we have an A and an O next to each other. And what we've learned is that if you have an O and an A next to each other and an OO next to each other. Before we start this next example, I just want to make a note. Um, if you wrote down any of these notes in your book, uh, I just changed this one over here. This one did say OA, but it's actually supposed to be AO, okay? Um, this next example, I tried it and I realized that there was a, 
I had gotten these two letters the wrong way around, okay? So we're gonna change it to AO. You'll see now what I'm talking about. So our next example is gonna be P4. 10. Now some teachers don't go past 4, but I'm just going to take you all the way to 10 just so you can practice anyways. So step 1, write down the name of the first element, that is phosphorus. So we're just going to say phosphorus. Then step 2, write the IDE name of the second element. Well that's just going to be uh, oxide. Now we use the prefixes. So the 4 is going to be tetra, so we're going to say tetraphosphorus. And then the oxygen uh, has a 10, so that's going to be deca. Now that sounds a bit weird, deca oxide. So when you have an A and an O next to each other, like we have over here, we're just going to change either that. So either we're going to get that, or sometimes you could get that. We're just going to change it to an O. So it's going to become tetraphosphorus, and then it's just going to be dec oxide. Instead of deca oxide, it's just going to be dec oxide. Our next example is going to be N2O5. Notice that it's two nonmetals. Here's nitrogen and here's oxygen. So we have to use the two nonmetal rule. Remember in the previous lessons we had metals and nonmetals. So that followed a slightly different rule. But when you have two nonmetals, then we have to use these prefixes. Okay. So step one, write down the name of the first element. That's just nitrogen. Step two, write the IDE name of the second one. So that's going to be oxide, okay? Um, oxide. And then the prefixes. Okay, so for nitrogen, there's a two in the front. So that's going to be di. And then for oxygen, that is a five. So that's penta. And so here we have dinitrogen penta oxide. But now here we have an A and an O next to each other. So we don't want that. We rather want to change that to an O. So, you're just going to scratch that A out, and so we end up with dinitrogen. You can actually use small letters here, that's what we're supposed to do, small letters, dinitrogen, and then pentoxide, pentoxide. And let's do one more example, so let's do SF6. So we can see that S is sulfur, which is there, which is a non-metal, and F is fluorine, and that's also a non-metal. So this is definitely two non-metals. So step one, write down the name of the first element, so that's going to be sulfur. Step two, write the IDE name of the second one, so that's going to be um, fluoride. And now we use the um, rules, or the prefixes. So this one, there's only one. Whoops. So this one, there's only one, but we don't put mono on the first one. You don't put mono on the first element. So it'll just be like that. And then for this one, there is a six, so that's going to be hexa. So we're going to go hexa. And then our last example is going to be C and O. So and notice that carbon is a nonmetal and oxygen is a nonmetal. Okay. So step one, write down the name of the first element, so that's going to be carbon. Step two, write down the IDE names, so that's going to be, um, oh, let's use small letters, that's going to be oxide. Okay, and then um, step three, use prefixes. So there's only one carbon, so you, but you're not going to say mono in the front because we don't use mono on the first element. For the second one, there's only one of those, so that means we will put a mono. But now have a look here, you've got two O's next to each other, and we rather want to change that to just one O. So we would scratch one of them out, and so we now have carbon and then just monoxide, not monoxide, just carbon monoxide, like that.